Do you have uh, ASL interpretation services by Paige Fuentes? Uh, that should be highlighted uh, for people viewing on Facebook Live. For people in the meeting, they can click Paige and uh, highlight her as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first on the agenda is a call to order. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get the meeting started, like I said. Uh, and next we'll go ahead and establish quorum. So I will um, read and just say if you're here. Um, Scott Dennis. Rose Dekas. Here. Um, Barry Dilly. Here. Samora Dower. Um, Claire Geisigam. Here. Um, Carolyn Lewis. Here. Sly Mata. Here. Davey McNilly, yes. Here. Uh, Earl Prusinski. Not yet. Uh, Paige said that she would be a, little, a couple minutes late. Okay. Area. I, see, I see Scott. I see Scott Dennis in the background of Lisa's as well. Okay. And Dave. <laughs> and let's see. Um, Arian Smedley. J.W. Smith. <laughs> Noah Tremblay. Here. Thank you, Noah. And Paige is here. Is there anyone else here as a guest? We do have uh, Lisa Simpson joining us as a prospective member. Uh, we also have uh, Paul Logue here as well, who's on the agenda today uh, from the Athens, Athens City. I'm blanking on your title right now, Paul. City planner, is it? Planner. Planner, OK. Planner's fun. Welcome, you two. And William Peacock tried to join, but he can't uh, log in. So I'm yeah. going to help him maybe for the next meeting. OK, good. Yeah, and if you're able to give him a call and work him through it, it's just clicking that button. So it, I tried. But... OK, thank you. Uh, uh, Davey, I also was unable to log on on my computer. And I've never had that problem with the commission meeting. So um, is, are there other people who are not on tonight that we were expecting? We certainly were expecting a few more people, uh, so I don't know if that's uh, a problem or not. I know Scott Thompson's on this call, and he typically sends out the meeting invites. Scott, if you wouldn't mind just sending out another round to everyone, that would be great. I would, I would appreciate that. So we've logging on now. We've established quorum. I, I'm counting nine people are here. There might be more that come. Okay, great. And we'll probably have a couple people join us here in a little bit. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the meeting. Uh, Carolyn, if you'd like to read our mission for the commission. Uh, the mission of the Athens City Commission on Disabilities. We're a committee of city government whose commitment is to provide a means for the concerns of people with disabilities to be heard, to advocate for public policy change, to provide expertise to the community on disabilities, and tell the community about the strengths and limitations of people with disabilities as well as how the community can help them improve their quality of life. Therefore, ensuring quality of opportunity and full participation in community life for everyone. Great. Thank you. It's always good to, to read our mission and uh, just get dialed into what we do. Um, let's go ahead and move down into the approval of minutes for October. Does anyone have any um, any changes or additions before we get a motion? I move that we accept them. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor, aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we have, uh, that was unanimous. 
Let's go ahead and move down. And we have a pretty busy meeting today. This will be our last meeting of the year. So we have a lot in the agenda. I'm just gonna go ahead and roll right down to the treasurer's report. Carolyn, if you wanna give us our treasurer's report. Okay, I sent out the report probably a little over an hour ago. And uh, we have a balance of $880, which is really not 880 for us, but back to the city. Yeah. Uh, we spent, um, and you know what? I pulled out the wrong report. Somebody read that for me. I got the wrong one. So, so your report. Carolyn. Thank you. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Thank you, Diane. I was going to say your report said that there was seven hundred sixty-two dollars left. That is in the um, in the, in the operating budget. Yes, and in the ASL budget, which is from the city. That amount is seven hundred and sixty to something. No, that amount was eight hundred thirty nine twenty. Okay, thank you. Do that one more time, Diane. So I don't know what I did with my paper. It was seven you said it was seven sixty two sixteen was left in the main one thousand dollar budget. And we spent how much for the Athena Award events? Would you um let me see. Did I pull that up? Let me see. We spent um a total of $237.84. Okay, thank you. So, by way of Diane, that's the treasurer's report. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Thanks for sending it. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I did. And that'll kind of close us out uh, in terms of our treasure, uh, treasurer's reports for the year, and we will return the rest of the money uh, back to the city by just not using it. And the city can certainly use the money now, so that works. Uh, can we have a motion to approve uh, the treasurer's report as submitted? I move that we approve it. Second. Is that Rose? Yep, Rose and Barry. Barry. Okay, you two are active today. Got it. <laughs> uh, all, all in favor, please uh, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and move down into new business at this point. Uh, the first thing we need to do is go ahead. We, uh, we basically okayed uh, through our committee and through our last commission meeting, the executive team for next year. It's the same team as this year. That's what, what we're currently doing. Uh, we didn't have anyone else who wanted to, uh, to run, so this will be pretty easy. Um, everyone who's in favor of keeping the current executive team, let's just do a unanimous consent. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> all right. we're, we're all set then. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and move on to updates on accessibility work uh, with Paul Logue and Noah Trembley with an update on their collaboration. I had uh, 10 minutes in the agenda, but uh, we are planning to do 15 minutes, actually. Uh, so go ahead and take it away, Paula Noah. Hi, everybody. I think Noah had a few words he was going to say to start. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'll ju just um, I'm Paul Logue. I'm the planner for the city of Athens, and thanks for putting me on the agenda this afternoon or evening. It's great to see everybody, even if it's on our computers. <laughs> Nice seeing you too. Thanks for coming. I first met with Paul just about a year ago, around this time. It was right after we had a FEMA award ceremony. I was really surprised and, well, a little angry about what the city called a new accessible bedroom on the second floor of Arts West. That meeting was real informal and relaxed. At that meeting, we started discussing other issues around town on each other's radar. And at the end of that meeting, we decided that we would meet again in a couple of months. Within those two months, I started noticing other small stuff around town that most people might overlook. And I was also very surprised to see that the city got right on a suggestion that I made in our first meeting which was the second automatic door opener at the community center. Anyway, we had another boring office meeting where we discussed a variety of issues. 
but the real fun and the important work began. For our third meeting, we decided to mix things up a bit and we decided to do a field meeting instead. So we went on a Volga hour walk uptown. I will now hand things over to Paul to talk about that experience and where the project is going. Thanks, Noah. And you know, one of the things I'll say to start with is uh, when Noah and I did, um, uh, I can't remember if we did two or three walks, but it was uh, probably the hottest, most humid and brightest summer days of the year. Um, <laughs> so there, despite um, there's, there wasn't a lot of people out and about anyway uh, because of the pandemic, but there was even you were out that, that, that afternoon or so. Um, so I think that was probably the sweatiest I got all year as well. Um, but to, what Noah, to Noah's point there, the first one is, you know, one of the things I, I want to acknowledge up front is um, uh, I am at this, at this very moment in my life, I am an um, able-bodied person. And um, I often, um, of course, I don't admittedly don't, have the same experience as, as a lot of people in our community do because of that. Um, I also don't see everything, of course, in our community the way a lot of other people do. And these um, the opportunity to, to go out and about with Noah is um, really, really helpful um, to for me to better understand um, the experience of other people, of course. Um, and it's been helpful just um, every day since then when I go out around the community or walking in my neighborhood or taking my dog on a walk or driving around Athens or taking a jog or whatever, just to, to I, I have a lot better understanding of uh, people's needs and uh, other citizens needs because of uh, a lot of the work that Noah has helped me with. So no, I want to thank you for that. You've been, it's really incredible to, um, <clears throat> and really important, I think, obviously for me to better understand what's going on out there. Uh, Noah and I did, we did, um, you know, some loops around uptown Athens and, and we would stop and have some discussions about some of those experiences. Um, it's really interesting, not, not interesting, but surprising, um, to see what I, what I would look at as somebody who's able-bodied as a, a very slight bump in a sidewalk and to, to have Noah explain what he feels when he rolls over that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I really took, I take this stuff very seriously that it's important that we make sure um, that we've got a community that works well for everybody. Uh, and so I'm really driven by these conversations and, and um, to better understand um, our community. But what I'm really driven by is, is what I keep getting stuck on is saying, how can we um, start moving forward to resolve some of these issues? I don't have answers. For that at this meeting i'm going to say that up front um but i know no and i keep having discussions to better understand that um, i'm having conversations with city administrators to better understand and to figure out how we can resolve some of these issues from a budgetary standpoint um, and how we can make sure that things um future projects and processes um that we're addressing things before they become issues if that makes sense um i think Diane, I know you sent out that report last week or earlier that this week. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna interject really quick, Paul. Please, Sorry, Davey, uh, yeah. we're, we're having yeah. a side conversation here. Uh, it looks okay. like Cheryl, Cheryl Przinsky, who's the commission member, uh, Scott and Ryan isn't able. She's like getting. She can see it, but she's not a panelist. Are you able to promote her to panelist? Uh, I think Scott would have to do that. She should um, be in now. There's Cheryl. Okay, great. There Sorry. we go. Keep keep going. We we're we're working now. Great. No, that's fine. Did, um, I guess I, I want to. I'll take a break just for a minute, and you know, of course, double check it with everybody if anybody has any questions or comments to start with. Um, and if not, Diane, I, the the document, those two documents you sent out earlier this week or late last week. Was that that looked like a lot of the information that Nate, Noah and I were compiling? But is that a separate audit? That um, 
Noah might Noah's on this accessibility committee, so he would have known about what it was that we were okay. and came up with. So there might be some duplication, but this was the work of the accessibility committee, and Noah's one of those members. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a lot of the the it's it's very similar to the the comments that Noah and I Noah and I um, reviewed. So that I guess that's good. What I what I will do is make sure that I'll double check all the notes from that Noah and I took, and and see what's missing from ours. Um, um, I think probably you know I keep thinking about how do we move forward with this stuff um, to to make it happen. Um, and I don't know yet. And I would love to really talk with members of the Disabilities Commission to see what kind of ideas we have on this. Um, I can say, you know, in the, moving into 2021, um, I, I really don't have budget ever. Um, my budget is usually my salary. Um, is how I look at it. Occasionally there's some money for, for planning purposes. Um, but in even moving into 2021, I'm not expecting much on my end. That being said, a lot of this is, of course, it's public infrastructure. Um, sidewalks and things like that are typically the responsibility for property owners there's you know good and bad to that um requirement um we have in the past we've we've identified um where we need to do sidewalk improvements and things around the yeah. community IT where things different reports thanks noah um so I think we might be able to look into th things like that for it. Um, historically, what we've done is look at sidewalks and said that we've got real problems, you know, that they need repair because they're, they're, they're dangerous. Um, heaving from tree roots and things like that. Um, I don't know if we want to get into the level of, of doing sidewalk assessments. I'm wondering if there's more efficient ways we can do this so that um, within working within city budgets or if there's uh, potential grants out there um that we could work on i also wonder how much um having conversations with property owners especially on on some of those some of those areas whether there's an opportunity there i know i'm, I'm thinking about on um congress street noah on the hillsides between washington and state um there was like the sidewalks are in pretty good shape, but then there's drop-offs at either end of the sidewalk where the ground goes about three to four inches down. And so um, there's, um, mm. there's a, a mm. risk to a lot of, yes. Yeah, this is Davey. And one, one thing we've been working on within the accessibility committee, which Noah's has probably shared with you is when there's a streetscaping project, uh, the, a grant funded streetscaping project, such as the one on Washington and State Street coming up where they cross court, uh, we're trying to get out ahead of that and do a walk, walk and roll audits uh, where during the pandemic, we've had someone, one of our commission members walk around, use, use Zoom to Zoom the rest of the commission members in and then take really specific notes on things that we'd like to see improved. And right. then what Diane, Diane sent you is the more very, you know, this broad list and the really specific list as well, which goes uh, through each block, block by block. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we, you know, need to do that every time. But what we want to do is anytime that there's a major streetscaping project to look at the blueprints, to make suggestions in that yeah. way. Uh, so this was a, a good tool to use to um, try and put together like an overarching document that uh, the city engineers would use as a punch list. Right. And I'm not sure, I'll make sure that if, if it's not to uh, Jessica Dine, our city engineer, I'm, if, if she doesn't have a copy of this document, I'm going to make sure she gets it. Um, I did provide, uh, had conversations with her and our former city engineer, um, Bob Hetty uh, over the summer after Noah and I did our did our walks and I made sure that they were aware of all the comments that were done there as well as Mayor Patterson and um, uh, the rest of the city administration so that we can start thinking about what we need to do here. Um, like I said, I just don't have any answers yet. Um, that is going to take some time, um, but I think um, some of this doesn't look really expensive to me. All of it looks really important. Um, which are, you know, so as a priority, I think when we know that something's important, then that, then that, that helps a lot. 
Um, and when we know that things might not be that expensive, that also helps a lot. Um, I think what I would like to do probably starting for next year or, or even later this year um, is maybe work with the, um, the committee um, and see if we can kind of prioritize what, you know, if we can do 10 things, but not 20 things, what 10 things would, would we want to hit first? And then we can start working our way down a list. Um, uh, or if we can do 60 things, but not 70 things um, so that we can, and then we can, that would help us to better understand um, although it's all important, some things might be more important than others, but I also could be wrong too. And that's part of the meeting today is to talk about the priorities of each of the yeah. committees. Like what, what do we really want to get done in this upcoming year? So mm -hmm. yeah, I think, okay. I think we will be able to, to work with you on that. We invited Jessica to our next uh, committee meeting as well. And Perfect. We, okay. We'll invite you as well to either that yeah. one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I, I, this, uh, th this is a, uh, um, I, this is the, this is the planning that I really enjoy actually having the opportunity to work on. Um, this is uh, a lot more important in my opinion than, uh, and I, it should take more time than floodplain management. <laughs> <laughs> so it needs to be done too, but this is, this kind of gets more to the core of what we're supposed to be doing as a city and as a people. Absolutely. And I think Diane had a comment. I, I had a question too. I, I think there's sort of two ways to approach some of the issues that there are. One is proactively trying to make sure that it's considered as things are changed, but also there needs to be a good solid response when something is wrong. Like, I don't know if it's built into the code office or built in, does it, sometimes it feels like it, it's not, um, it's not like automatic that it's checked. So are there ways of checking landlord stuff or when new businesses go in or, I don't know, getting those kinds of places also thinking about this? Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, uh, we, we probably need to be, we need to be doing a better job on a lot of those issues, Diane. You're right. Is there, uh, is, is there a specific, like a complaint issue, I mean, a, Suppose that I'm not in the commission and I'm disabled and I want to bring a problem to the city. Is there some formal way that it can happen now? Because if you're disabled, you don't know what to do. You know, like, has anything been ever set up with that kind of thing? You know, with, I mean, I hesitate to use the word complaint, but, you know, it's raising an issue. Who do you... you know, who would a person contact in the city? Yeah, and I, absolutely. And we can make this the last uh, comment maybe because I know we're running up to our 15 minutes here. And Yeah, okay. Next thing. To make so, it formalized, you know, formal complaint system. Mm -hmm. we, we do have um, uh, a city app that has uh, the capabilities for anybody. You're, and you, you're welcome to call it a complaint. That's not a problem. Um, uh, so that, that's one thing. Um, I believe we were looking at um, uh, overhauling and create and setting up with a new uh, city app that we thought was more dynamic and more affordable. Yeah. Um, I'm actually not sure where we are with that. I'll double check. But they, that was one thing that we were doing so that you can report all kinds of problems and experiences. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like for the general public to know that there's that you exist and that I mean that there is this form to use or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We will follow up on that and uh, figure out what the new app is and also maybe provide some guidance on how to do that. But we can talk about that in the accessibility committee. Was in phase two of this project. One more time, Noah. I'm recovering some of this in phase two of this project. Noah and I aren't done yet. We're yeah. still working. <laughs> Great. Yeah, thanks for your work, Noah, and thanks for your work, Paul, on this. We really appreciate it, and we're seeing, seeing the fruits of the labor as well as Athens becomes more accessible. Um, I, can I make one more comment? I haven't seen the agenda, but I, I did want to give an update um, to everybody. Um, we The, um, the stage uh, ramp at Arts West is, is being built as this week. Cool. 
Yeah, so I wasn't sure if that's been communicated to, to you all, but um, no. uh, we, we're working on it. Andrew Chickie wanted me to make sure I told you that. Thank you, Paul. That's great news. Yeah. That's one of our one of our major priorities is making sure that our performing art spaces are accessible. So, great. so hopefully we can okay. cross that off this list. And I keep I keep forgetting to do this, but in terms of accessibility, if we can say our name before we talk, that's a good a good best practice. So this is Davey. I should do that. Um, Let's go ahead and move down to the Athena Award. Thank you very much, Paul. You're welcome to stick around, though, and hear what we're what else we're up to. Wonderful time. Then we'll talk. Okay. I'll go and pass it on to Carolyn. Well, I just want to say everything worked like we planned, <laughs> and uh, thanks to the great help of Claire and Ryan and Scott, uh, it happened. And when we started thinking about it earlier as to how we we're going to do this virtually, uh, we just started putting paper to pen or fingers to type and, and everything worked out. And I uh, just want to thank everyone involved, particularly Claire, Paul and Ryan for all their work in making things happen even at the last minute. So thank you. I might say we had some really good publicity out of it. Uh, front page messenger. I haven't seen anything in the news yet. Uh, and then another story, I think, uh, I know that um, we did some radio spots and we talked about the Athena Award there, and I interviewed Patty. You got all of those links, so um, we we just are really happy the way things turned out, and that um, Diane, thank you. <laughs> I'm texting Diane at the last minute saying, knock on the door, <laughs> and uh, she made that part happen too, and Patty, I know, was really pleased and surprised, and uh, so thank you, everyone, uh, for working on that, and Barry, all of the committee, for your thought into it, and the process of determining who the recipient would be. That took a lot of thought too, so we're happy about that. Claire? Yes, I thought I thought it went perfectly. And the fact that Patty knew enough that she had the instinct to take her camera with her. And so we got to see the meeting between her and Diane and we got to see her entire reaction. It was just, it was exactly what I had pictured it being because I had wanted to create something that was very like us to create, create something that was very localized and very intimate and all of those elements came together. So um, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Lewis for her amazing script writing and uh, coordinating everything as well as um, Ryan and Scott, because uh, we just, it, it really took a lot of, a lot of teamwork to, to get this off the ground. I sent an email to Patty only. She thought probably I sent it to all the recipients, but I said, we need to know where you're going to be watching. And that's how we knew where she was going to be and that she would be at the place where we, needed to knock on the door, like Publishers Clearinghouse. So, and uh, our, our dream every year is to have it like the Academy Award, and no one will know who the recipient is except for the committee and the commission. And thank you all for your confidentiality. Uh, Barry? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't have anything. I mean, I was not actively involved in all of the planning of the actual um, event. So that was Carolyn's big deal. I'm not very good at the, the, the tech stuff, um, but it, it was delightful to watch and I'm really glad it, it came off. And thank you, Carolyn and yeah. everybody. Yeah, and just to, just to do a quick piggyback off of that, again, just the, uh, just a world, world of gratitude from, from me as the chair, but also just for the whole city for, the amount of work that went into that, Carolyn and Claire and and every Diane, everyone, everyone who who had a hand in that, it, it was amazing. Great job! I think we have a few short clips to play as well from it. What should we do first, Carolyn? Uh, let's do Patty and end with God Bless America. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. And I'm just going to play the part where Patty is now being filmed in her home by Diane as she gets the award. But the 
magic puppet parades that people travel miles to see. The woman through her life's work inspires joy, art, making, collaboration, and inclusion. Our own Patty Mitchell. Congratulations, Patty. The floor is yours. Thank you, Steve. Mayor Patterson of Athens, Ohio. I appreciate that so much. I'm so, that, that, thank you. This is, uh, it was delivered right at the doorstep, which is <laughs> just so sweet. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to celebrate with all of the Patchwork artists in our community to, um, to, to celebrate what is um, Athens, which is Passion Works. And we've been um, making and celebrating each other for 22 years now. Through um, Ohio Arts Council grants, we began and the county board um, hosted us at ATCO, um, having a little space in the back room that grew into a bigger space and a bigger space. And then, uh, you know, so grateful to Carol Sanborn and other members of uh, at ATCO that, um, allowed the not only the physical space but the mental space to say yes to the possibility and the flower has um just grown and now we're making part of the well part of the process of making the flower is happening at the community use maker space previously reused and so we're beginning to advance our production um, outside of our studio and inviting uh, community members into alternative types of employment and we're just we're just thrilled i i can't think of I, you know part of um this being able to to make a life here in Athens is having um, some kind of idea or like crazy kooky thing and say, Hey, mayor, what if we did this? Hey, you know, hi university. What if we did this? And um, it's just a beautiful playground for adventure. And I'm, uh, I'm so grateful to be for this community. I thought that was just a, such a great acceptance speech as well. That was Stephanie Morris and Sarah May. And thanks also to the mayor, Patty Whitmore's Whitmer, and the mayor's office, and to JW, who did a phenomenal job of recapping last year and his experience. So that's that's our report, Davey. All right, great. Um, let's go ahead and move down on the agenda to uh, the next part, which is uh, acknowledgement of Barry Dilley and Scott Dennis. This is their last meeting as uh, full commission members. Their terms are expiring at the end of the year. And I just wanted to just take a moment. And again, I already mentioned this at the last uh, meeting, but just the, the many, many years of dedication and hard work, um, the Keeping, keeping the Disability Commission going some years when maybe we had less participation and um, 
yeah, just having having that will and drive to to keep things going, and and also all the work that they do outside of the Disability Commission. Barry working on the sills, Scott Dennis working at um, Havar for so many years. Um, just really appreciate you both, and I hope that you're still able to. Uh, I think Barry's going to stay uh, with the committee with the education and outreach, and uh, Scott will, you know. We'll reach out to you every once in a while. Do any of you want to say, either of you want to say something? No, thank yeah. you. Uh, go ahead, Scott. Well, this is Scott. Um, I, I am hoping to stay involved with the advocacy committee also. And, Great. Uh, Great. Yep, and thank you for the um, recognition. It's been a wonderful ride. And I'd like to say, I'd like to mention too, that I think that the current commission perhaps has the most potential of the whole 15 years I've been doing this. I think we have more potential right now with the current makeup of the committee, with you as the chair to, of the commission, to really um, accomplish a lot, you know, perhaps more than we have up until uh, the last couple of years. Thank, thank you, Scott. Yeah, and again, just really, really appreciate it. And I think the reason why we're all on this commission is to to make people's people who have disabilities their lives better in our community, and I, I really hope that every day, every meeting, that we have that in our in our forefront. So, um, I think that kind of dovetails nicely into the social steering committee update. Uh, we had a steering committee meeting. Uh, we had, I think maybe around nine people on our first uh, steering committee meeting. Uh, Barry was involved. JW, who's on the commission, was also involved. We have re representation from HABCAP, Integrated Services, Integrated Athens, and the Athens County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Um, right now, we're going to put together a four-phase plan to begin services, uh, and we're going to have a parallel plan as we get approval from state and national accrediting agencies for, for SILs. Again, SOSIL is the Southeastern Ohio Center for Independent Living. And a SIL is that a disability service uh, ran by people with disabilities that is a clearinghouse of information from what people may need uh, when they become disabled or if they have a disability to get the information and referral, uh, but also to get the supports and services that they need in the community. So I'm just really, really excited about that and um, yeah, ready to, to move forward. Uh, Barry, did you have any thoughts on that? You've, you've been the driving force behind that for the last um, idea. I'm just delighted that it's underway um, and beginning to figure out what particular services do we need down in this area? Because the thing I've felt is in the big cities where they had the CILs, there's already a lot of services available. But here we're also spread out. And there's so few services that we really will need this one-stop shop with lots of information and guidance. And then how do we emphasize what was important? In Marietta, they were emphasizing tech, technical stuff. Um, and that was all they were doing as far as I could see. And that felt pretty limited, and I may be wrong on that, but the tech stuff's great, but there's also a whole lot of just human support and guidance. Absolutely, this is, this is Davey, and I think since we'll have a local steering committee, we can really make it for what we need here in Athens and, and our region as well. Um, oh, great, and Cheryl just let us know that she used to work at the Toledo Ability Center, uh, so, Great. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great sell. Um, I haven't been able to work specifically with them yet, but um, yeah, we'd love to have, have your feedback and advice on, on ways to make it work. Um, let's go ahead and move down to the, any, any questions or comments on that? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move down to um, our committee reports, uh, let's move down to the exec team. Uh, one of the things that um, I'm gonna jump down to the third point first, which is uh, setting intentions and committees for the next year. Um, as you have either your December or January meetings, if you could 
uh, think about what kinds of outcomes and goals that you have for the upcoming year. We did that a little bit with the accessibility committee, and I think it worked really well. Um, and I'd like to just encourage everyone to, to do that. Um, I met with uh, Dr. Bush at Ohio University, um, I think it was Thursday of last week, and right now there's a lot of moving pieces happening at, at OU. Um, once, once things kind of settle down, um, they'll be able to be more involved with our processes as well. Uh, but she was really grateful for our accessibility work, for our education and outreach that we're doing and the advocacy. And she mentioned a few things that um, our commission and accessibility committee specifically could do and gave us some advice for the, for the SIL. Uh, Noah, did you want to mention anything about the uh, food delivery? Are there any upcoming meetings? Okay, Noah has been working on uh, starting, I think we mentioned this last time, working on starting some food delivery options using uh, food stamps or EBT to get local, you know, organic healthy food to people. Uh, so that's a really exciting project and something that Noah has been kind of spearheading off to the side here. And it's been really exciting and good to be following that. Um, anything else from executive team, Diane, Noah, or Carolyn? I don't have anything else. This is okay. Diane. Great. I, I don't know if you mentioned this before. Maybe you did, David, but we will be presenting to city council in December. Oh, right. Good point. A report. Just a reminder. No, I hadn't mentioned that yet. So we have a time to meet uh, to present to city council. Uh, at our yearly, you know, what we've been up to and what we would like from city council. Uh, that's coming up in late December. I think it's December 27th off the top of my head, but we'll get some more information out to people who would like to watch that uh, and join. Diane? It's December 14th. Oh, 14th. Okay. Thank you. And usually a bunch of people will come and just... Um, be present to give support to the team that presents. Yeah, it's good to kind of show up and show our presence. Uh, moving on into accessibility, do you want to kind of take take that, uh, Diane or Noah? Sure. We we had a um, this is Diane. We had a pretty nice committee meeting where we finalized some of the details of the reports that we did over the summer and we sent it to the city. It sounds like Paul received it. And yeah, so our goal is to um, meet with Jessica at our next meeting to figure out if we can be involved in the processes, the systemic processes for looking at areas before they actually do construction projects. So yeah, I think that it will have a far reaching effect. So between Noah's good work with Paul directly to make sure he understands what everything means and us as a committee sort of assembling it and helping them see it's one person, I think it will have a really big impact for the city. So it's a good team. Yeah, absolutely. And we can share. I, I, I don't know if we shared that full report with the whole commission, but we could send that out to everyone if we haven't. Yeah, I sent it out today. I thought that Patty was sending it to everyone, but I just sent it out today. So everyone okay. just received it. Great. And I was going to say, too, if um, anyone... I'm looking for funding for the food project. Mm. Okay, for the food project, now it's starting to look for I'm looking for funding for the food project. That's good. Yep. People are responding, I think. So this, this is Diane again. I was just going to say, if anybody reads the report and they think of other things we should be considering or bringing to the city, just let us know. Absolutely. Uh, let's go on down to uh, communications, Claire. Hi, this is Claire. So I did not have the communications committee meet this month because I just 
yeah. really had my hands full with the <laughs> with the Athena Award, among other things. And I know that we are also not planning to meet in December. However, we have so much that's in the planning stage right now that we're going to be able to really uh, jump off in January and get the ball rolling. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Can I interject? Claire, you deserve massive congratulations for getting that beautiful front page article in the Messenger right after the Athena Award. That was massively impressive. I got our name out. You know, it's the important thing is besides besides the content, getting people to look and say, "Oh, I didn't know we ever did had a disability commission." That's important. Thank you. Oh well, thank you, Rose. But to be honest, that um. I that I, I didn't send out a press release or anything. Um, Dr. Lewis, I don't, I don't know if that was you, but we may have had that was me. Heather Willard oh, join in. Chairman, I'm sorry. Congratulations. No, that's, okay. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. In fact, Barry and I went back and forth with it and she helped a lot. And we just, we sort of feed off of each other. So. Oh, um, well, you can I thought part, that you were, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. The first part of that front page they picked it up themselves, and then the last part of they wrote our release, put in our release. So someone watched and picked up or interviewed Patty, so that was good. Oh, well, that's good. See, I thought from, from talking to you that you had had very little to do with it. Oh, you're, you're, so, you're so modest. <laughs> it's a team. <laughs> okay, great. Let's uh, go ahead and move down to uh, education and outreach. Well, I would just like to, um, even though Barry's going off the commission, she's still going to be involved with our committee, and we're happy about that. Uh, intentions for next year, we've got pretty much three big things going on, I would think. Um, the Calling All Artists has a front page. I don't know if you can see this. This is in the Messenger today. Uh, they've got the little inset here and then a story about the award that we're calling all artists to uh, submit a design uh, by January 31st. And hopefully we'll get some we sent emails out to the principal, uh, the superintendent of schools gives and ask him who was sent it to all the art teachers, which he did Sent me a note back saying he'd done it. We sent it to the university art faculty as well. And so that's a big thing that we get that in the works and get a committee of local art, um, art people to be our judges of the uh, new design. And then we uh, award it. So that's the big one for next year. We're going to face the oral history project and then talk about new or re re looking, looking at the criteria for the Athena Award. There's some things you might want to change in there to make it um, more equitable for all. Great. Th thank you for that update, Carolyn. And yeah, again, we have just amazing commission members, but just again to acknowledge your your work and effort it's just amazing to see on a on a daily or weekly basis depending on how much we communicate so yeah it's just amazing how much you do and get done thank you um let's move on down to advocacy and sly yeah so now i'll be very short given the time that we have we had our committee meeting last week went exceptionally well um with Lisa joining us and just being a great contributor to some of the work that we're doing. Our goals this last meeting focus on setting a regular meeting agenda, finalizing the goals of the committee, but also um, Scott brought up a very great idea for the advocacy committee to take a lead on in terms of advocating for the commission, but also advocating for those, this, those that identify as disabled within Athens and identifying Athens as a welcoming place and welcoming home for those. But given the time that we have left, I'm going to create a proposal for the committee to review, to give us insight so we can take that, take this goal and bring it to, bring it to um, make it happen. Sounds great. Thank you, Sly. Any, yeah, I'm really excited for, for that committee, especially. I think we have, this is Davey, um, that we have just, you know, so much potential as, as Scott was saying, and we're gonna do a lot of great work in this upcoming year. Um, 
Let's go ahead and move down. Uh, we're at announcements. Uh, one announcement is that we are not having a full commission meeting in December. We'll see everyone next year. We are having a accessibility committee meeting though, um, but I think all other committees are taking a break for next month. Is that correct? Okay. Um, any other announcements before we close out today? Uh, again, we'll, we'll uh, publicize the upcoming uh, presentation at City Council that's coming up. All right. Thank you, everyone. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I see Noah. Do we have a second? Second. Second. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're picked, Diane. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for another great meeting and a great year. I really appreciate the work that everyone does. And at times, it feels like a lot. It's a lot to um, work, you know, within an ableist system that uh, it's kind of hard to get through at times. But, uh, you know, really enjoy enjoy the time that you have. Do lots of Zoom calls with, with your friends and family and, and enjoy the time off this upcoming month. Uh, thank you all.